SM 9 News at 10 starts right now. The man accused of killing a Southwest Airlines employee at the El Paso International Airport parking lot now found guilty of murder. We're going to have more on this story in just a bit, but first we're learning new details into the sexual harassment allegations that led to two El Paso Police Department supervisors being arrested and charged with official oppression. Thank you for choosing KTSM 9 News at 10. I'm Andy Morgan and I'm Natasha Paloma. These allegations coming from two female El Paso police officers. KTSM 9 News reporter Shelby Cap is live from Central El Paso. Shelby, you've been going through those court documents today. Some very graphic stuff here. Tell us what do they say? Natasia, Andy, those court documents revealing numerous incidents where El Paso Police Department Lieutenant John Surface allegedly asked for sexual favors, nude photos, and one time showed up to a female officer's house. Some of these allegations dating back to 2016. But go ahead and take a look at these photos here. You can see Lieutenant John Surface, who was arrested along with Sergeant Adon Chavez. Court documents say the female officer felt she had to send Surface nude photos and fulfill his request to touch her breast and kiss her because she said he made it obvious he would make her job difficult if she didn't fulfill his request. At one point when the female officer was five months pregnant, she alleges that surface showed up to her home and when she said she didn't want him to come inside, he went through her backyard into her bedroom and asked her if she wanted to do something sexual. She said no. She said she feared for her safety, but he eventually left. The El Paso Police Interim Chief commenting today on the arrest of the officers. We want everybody to come to work and feel comfortable and safe uh, in, in the environment that they work in. And we want them to understand that. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter uh, what gender they are, but uh, anybody can report any uh, uh, allegations of misconduct. As for Sergeant Chavez, who was also arrested, court documents reveal that the other female officer provided text messages between herself and Chavez that showed he failed to take action to prevent sexual harassment and unwanted sexual advances to the female officer by Lieutenant Surface. Now, the documents also state that if that other female officer did not go along with the advances or with what was being asked of her, that there would be disciplinary action. Andy, Natasia. Yeah, and Shelby, some of these allegations dating back to 2016. So what did police say in terms of when the accusers came forward? Police did say that those two female officers came forward in the beginning of June, but those two supervisors were not arrested until yesterday. Shelby, thank you very much. Also important to note that Lieutenant Surface is a 19 year veteran with the department. His bond has been set at $30,000 while Sergeant Chavez, a 21 year veteran of the department, his bond is set at $7,500. The man accused of killing a Southwest Airlines employee has been found guilty of murder. The jury making that verdict today. As we reported, Bernard Chrisman is the man accused of killing Juan Anzaldo, a man his wife was dating. Anzaldo was killed in the El Paso airport parking lot back on November of 2021. Of course, we'll continue to bring you more updates as the sentencing phase is set to begin. Police in Austin are investigating a shooting that left two people dead and one person injured. Yeah, just a tragic situation unfolding in our state's capital. The shooting happened today outside of a shopping center. Officials say despite reports of sounds of an explosion, there were no explosives found on the scene. The relationship between the victims and suspect remain unclear at this time. However, interim police chief Robin Henderson says there is no threat to the public. That scene has been re rendered safe. At this time, the relationship between the suspect and the victims are unknown. And police saying one of the two dead is the shooter. The second victim was taken to the hospital with life threatening injuries. Well, it's time to get our first check of weather as we take a live look outside, courtesy of our photographer, Jesus Baltazar. You can see that. Uh, Moon right there, all clear skies. Hopefully everyone had a chance to see the blue moon, of course. That was uh, last night, certainly something uh, you'd like to see, especially knowing that you don't get to see that opportunity again until the year 2037. Something else that I've noticed lately, Natasha, seems to be getting darker a lot 
earlier. That's right. Yes. And Chief Meteorologist Monica Cortez joining us now. Andy, I think you're onto something. You know, we have those <laughs> triple digit temperatures mm -hmm. here in El Paso, but when we start having those shorter days, doesn't that mean that we're getting into the fall winter months? Oh, absolutely, <laughs> Natasia. So it's so funny you guys say that because yes, so uh, once we hit September 21st, 22nd, that's our autumn equinox. So that means equal day, equal night. And then from there, we'll hit our winter solstice, shortest day, longest night. So uh, we're getting into those colder months. 87 degrees, your current temperature at the airport. Looking at those easterly winds at about eight miles per hour. And so today we actually topped out at 98 degrees at the airport. 71 is how we started off this morning. I'm going to tell you exactly when we expect to see the possibility of those triple digit highs for how long in your full forecast a little later in this newscast. Back to you guys. Monica, thank you. Two men are behind bars after allegedly trying to steal an off-roading vehicle on Desert Loop in Far East El Paso. Deputies arresting 21-year-old Stephen Gamboa and 46-year-old Ronnie Rojas. The Sheriff's Office says deputies saw a car with a rope tied to the bumper and an ATV secured to the opposite end. The victim also said other belongings had been stolen from the premises, which were found in Gamboa's vehicle. Deputies also found a handgun and an air compressor in the car. And new at 10, a Guatemalan, Guatemalan fugitive who was wanted for aggravated rape in his home country has now been deported. That is according to immigration officials. 23-year-old Antonio Osorio Lucas entered El Paso illegally back in June and was arrested that very same day. He remained in ICE custody at the El Paso Processing Center until he was deported on Wednesday. He was flown to Guatemala. Across Texas now, more than 770 new state laws passed by the Texas legislature will go into effect tomorrow. And these laws will impact many things from health care, crime and gender. One of those new laws will have a tax exempt on several health and family related products. This items would include wound care dressings, diapers, menstrual supplies, breast milk pumping products, baby wipes, baby bottles and maternity clothing. KTSM speaking with a local organization who says this is long overdue. Because a lot of the items on the car here is people think might be a luxury. Um, but they're not, they're essential, they're necessities and they're basic necessities. So I don't believe people should have to pay taxes for these items, whether it's the feminine hygiene or the children's diapers and baby wipes because those are needed. And Moreno says she's thankful lawmakers were able to create this bill, saying many families won't have to worry about those few extra dollars in tax to make a purchase. Now, another law that will increase punishments for students caught vaping on school campuses. The new law requires those students to be placed in an alternative schooling environment or a disciplinary alternative education program. A student can be penalized for selling or giving another student an e-cigarette or possessing or using an e-cigarette themselves. Students can also face in-school suspension and the rule also applies to students with marijuana, THC or alcohol. For the full list of some of these laws that will go into effect tomorrow, you can visit KTSM.com. Coming up, some national recognition and education for two local high schools. We'll tell you what it's all about. Plus, week two of the high school football season in Texas kicking off tonight. We have some highlights a little bit later in sports. Thanks for watching KTSM 9 News at 10, putting local first.
Morning in America, weekday mornings at 6, 5 central on News Nation. So, Monica, we were keeping an eye all evening to see if we would reach those triple digit temperatures. We came up a little short, which is, uh, I guess, a Great. good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, Andy, you've been keeping track. You and Monica have been mm -hmm. keeping track. How many are we at so far? I'll let you do the How the many? The big here. reveal. <laughs> So 60 days so far 60 days. in 2023. And it looks like if our forecast verifies these next nine days, we could be setting new records. And we've been we've been talking. We went through this entire stretch, mm -hmm. almost the entire month of July, yeah. to get two days away to a record <laughs> that we might not break if we don't get those two I or three days. Know. We might as well just we do might it. might as well. Just yeah. do it. Come on. We have, yeah. <laughs> Make 2023 the year to remember. Because <laughs> I feel remember. like everyone talks about 1994 being yeah, a yeah. really All hot summer. All the time. Sure. I remember. I mean, I don't remember that year, but I remember everyone talking about how hot it was. And now, well, we're living now it's 2023 yeah. <laughs> so check this out this is where we're at right now this is a live picture of downtown el paso today was a very abnormally warm day for the sun city remember we are basically this is the last day of august we're ready to make that jump into september which you think september you think pumpkin spice you think those cooler temperatures and it's, it's anything but cooler this week. So we're looking at about 87 degrees. That's your current temperature right now. Easterly winds at about eight miles per hour. So we are seeing those really nice calm conditions so far at the airport. And so our dew point is sitting at about 41 degrees right now. That's very, very dry, but check it out. 98 degrees. That was your official high for today. 95 in Las Cruces, 93 in Juarez. And here's how we compare on average El Paso. We're supposed to be getting closer to 90 two degrees. We were at 98 this afternoon, so definitely above it and just a few degrees shy from that record set in 2011. Now tonight going into tomorrow morning definitely forecasting seasonal overnights. 72 degrees in El Paso, 71 in Juarez, 66 in Las Cruces. As for tomorrow, we're going for the big 100 degrees tomorrow afternoon. There is that chance that we could see triple digits. Uh, southerly winds at about 5 to 10 miles per hour in Las Cruces, 96. Your forecast high 5 to 10 miles per hour. Now, as we take a look, this is the reason why we're seeing those really hot temperatures. You have this massive high pressure system kind of settling right over much of the southern part of the United States going into the desert southwest, and it's a pattern that we're going to be seeing for the next several days. So this is what Andy, Natasha and I were talking about. Here's your triple digit tally. We haven't used it in a while, so this is what it looks like. 60 days of a triple digit high so far this year. We haven't had a stretch, thank goodness. And then as far as our hottest temperature this year, it goes to August 6th at 112 degrees. Now, once we compare it to other years right now, this is what's going on. First place for the most 100 degree temperatures we've seen in an entire year goes to 1994 at 62 degree or at 62 days. 60 is second place and that one goes to us 2023. So we won't even look at third place because right now we're in the running for potentially either matching or breaking the record high for the most 100 degree days in one year. 61 days would potentially go to Friday if we do manage to hit 100. Uh, 62 days would go to Monday Labor Day also forecasting 100. Now if the rest of the week verifies this would be number 63, 64 and and we would break the record for the most 100 degree days in a year. So we'll have to wait and see. I do want to give a big shout out to our weather watcher here tonight. So let's go ahead and go back just a little bit. Here we go. This one goes to Gilbert Guillen. He actually got to see the super blue moon from yesterday. What a view. I think this is from Scenic Drive or maybe Tomley Park. And if I'm not mistaken, it just looks so beautiful. And if you'd like to be featured on KTSM 9 News, go ahead and submit those beautiful weather photos to us through our social media platforms or email news at KTSM. Com. We'll be right
news as we explore these topics and more with the mental health professionals at Emergence Health Network. Welcome back. Some exciting news for Clint ISD Early College Academy. They received the best rating of any high school in the El Paso area. The U.S. News and World Report releasing their annual rankings today for high schools around the country. And the Academy ranked 52nd in Texas and ranked 395 in the national rankings. And another Borderland school receiving some rec uh, national recognition from the same report. That would be Northwest Early College High School, which is part of Canunfio ISD. They cracked the top 700 in the nation and the top 100 in Texas. The graduation rate there was actually 100% and virtually every student takes AP exams. These rankings are well respected since the data is compiled by third parties and not sent by the school districts themselves. The Parkland dance team, the Caperettes, are calling on all dancers to register to their upcoming dance camp. Those who participate can also be part of a performance during a football halftime show this season. The camp is open to those ages 5 through 17. It's going to be held on September 16th and September 17th at Parkland High School. The camp is $35 per dancer, and you can contact head coach Crystal Ortiz at the number you see right there on your uh, screen. And also uh, important to give the shout out to not only all the dancers, cheerleaders, JROTC, color guard, <laughs> mascots. I'm not sure if Everyone I mixed. Everyone yeah, the field. That make yeah. Friday night so special, or even tonight, like Thursday night, we had some high school football. Yeah, we're always looking for uh, eye watches, is what we call them, where we get you mm -hmm. saying mm -hmm. we watch nine overtime all the mm -hmm. time. So if you watch nine overtime all the time, I'm sure please it's let everyone us know. out there. Absolutely, <laughs> everybody, all the two and a half million people who live yeah. in the borderland, they there all we watch. <laughs> yeah, well, a good reason to watch tonight. A instant classic at the sack tonight. America is hosting Odessa High. We got highlights next in sports plus UTEP volleyball playing its home opener trying to improve to 4-0 on the young season. Highlights next.
60 months. Plus, get a free Yeti cooler with qualifying purchases only at Ashley. And now, KTSM 9 Sports with Colin Deaver. Sponsored by Glasheen Byers and Enderman Injury Lawyers. One week ago today, the Americas Trailblazers kicked off the Noe Robles era with a convincing win on the road at Las Cruces High in their final non-district game tonight. The Blazers were looking to cement themselves as a true threat in District 16A hosting Odessa High over at the sack. The Americas offense was explosive in week one, looking to be dominant once again tonight. Last play of the first quarter for the Trailblazers, Omarion Dumas, yes, little brother of Aaron, gets loose down the sideline. Tackled eventually inside the 10 yard line. Let's go to the second quarter now. The continuation of that drive. Fourth and goal. Mark Moore's pass. Gonna be a touchdown. Oh no. Brian Promessi drops it. It would remain scoreless, but Odessa would take control late in the first half. This is Mikey Coda looking deep to Oklahoma commit Ivan Carayon for the touchdown. It was 13 0 Broncos at the half. Let's go to the fourth quarter now. Trailblazers within a score. How about Cameron Johnson up the gut? The Blazers take the lead 20 to 19 with 630 to go. Under 15 seconds to go. Same score. Fourth and two for Odessa. Here's Coda eventually scrambling, looking like John Elway helicoptering for the first down with four seconds to go. And on steps, Aldrich Rivetta, 37 yarder for the win at the horn. Let's go to Dave and Buster's boys. Odessa wins 22 to 20. Heartbreaker for the Blazers who open District 1 6 a play next Friday versus Montwood. Further out east, Mountain View trying to improve the 2 0 on the young season with DJ Check as their head coach playing host to Cathedral. First quarter, Matthew Slozar on fourth down the halfback screen to Alejandro Lerma. He would do the rest. Mountain View cruises in for the 41 to 15 victory. They're 2 0 on the season. How about that? For the Lobos tomorrow, the Borderlands most in-depth high school football wrap up show nine overtime returns for week two. Tune in for 9 OT 10 15 p.m. on KTSM with myself, Sam Guzman, Ed Stansbury, Jason Flores and Andy Morgan every single Friday night through November. Meanwhile, at the college level, the 2023 season began in earnest tonight with some big time week one matchups. Former uh, Burgess star Tavadis Jones and the Missouri Tigers beat South Dakota 35 to 10. Jones did not see the field, but he's one of a few former Borderlands stars we're monitoring at the next level, including LJ Martin and Jeremiah Cooper. We'll start here in the Big Ten with some of the best games of the night. Matt Rule and Nebraska on the road at Minnesota. Fourth and 10 for the Gophers, trailing 10 to 3, under three minutes to go. Eighth and Kaliak Manis. Great name, better catch by Daniel Jackson. Somehow dragging the foot, getting a, uh, both hands on the ball. What a grab, tying the game at 10 after a Nebraska turnover. Minnesota trying to win it with a 47-yarder. Dragan Kesic would drill it. The Gophers win it at the gun, 13 to 10. The final score in Minneapolis. Out west, number 14, Utah hosting Florida. The Gators' first non-conference road game outside of the state of Florida since 1991. First Utes play. This is why they don't leave the state. Bryson Barnes. Deep to Money Parker for six. UTEP wins 24 to 11. The SEC is soft. They refuse to play anybody outside of 90 minutes away from their home stadiums or in non-conference sites like Georgia, the Georgia Dome, Sugar Dome, whatever your Sugar Sugar Bowl, excuse me. Uh, anyways, shade in the SEC. Go play real road games. On the hardwood, the UTEP volleyball team could not have gotten off to a better start to the 2023 season last week, and the Miners went 3-0 at a tournament in Louisiana, including a five-set victory over National Powerhouse Washington in the first match of the season last Friday. UTEP playing its home opener tonight at Memorial Gym, hosting San Francisco this evening and looking good out of the block. Sarah Pustahia, the block for the Miners as they take an early 4-1 advantage. Then it will be Hande Yatis. Serving, clips the net, and falls in for an ace for the Miners. And how about Alianza Darley and Kyle Weaver teaming up here on the double block for UTEP. They win this match three sets to one, 4 0 on the year. They play Arizona State tomorrow in Las Cruces. And finally, an emotional night in Las Cruces for the New Mexico State soccer team. The Aggies playing host to Incarnate Word this evening and holding a purple out game in honor of Talia Chavaria, the Aggies 20 year old defender who died this summer shortly before the start of the season. The Aggies and Cardinals playing to a scoreless draw in this one, but the outcome was far from the most important thing about tonight. To be fair, it's exactly who NMSU is. You know, this this is a family. We're not 
we're not just a soccer program over here. We're a soccer program, a football program, a volleyball program, a track program. And if something happens to any one of those members, all of us are coming out to support. Seeing the support makes us want to go even more, uh, even though it's a difficult time and difficult situation for us. I think the support that we receive helps, helps us a lot. Certainly a touching night. The Aggies are home to play Pacific on Sunday at 1 p.m. That is your look at sports. We'll be right back after the break. golden shell run away dip you're free now sonic 299 buffalo chicken dip bites hair makeup and men's grooming sponsored by all right guys here's another look at your nine day forecast we're expecting to see the return of those triple digit highs 100 degrees on friday 98 saturday flirting with that century mark on sunday for Labor Day, uh, we're looking at 100 degrees. So guys, if you do have a three day weekend, just make sure you're staying hydrated, you're staying cool, plenty of sunblock. It's almost hard to believe that we're already entering the first week of September. It doesn't really feel like it. It feels like we're holding strong to summer. There is no cooling yeah. in sight. You know what I hate is on the holidays, I like to take some long hikes, yeah. but I haven't been able to hike this summer because by it's eight, nine so o'clock, it is already yeah. so, yeah, so Yeah, we're hot. still in the 90s. No, we're actually starting to go into the 90s in the morning. <laughs> Again. Yeah. Yeah. Fall nowhere to be found. <laughs> Soon, <yet>. though, hopefully. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Have a great night. Bye.